We're here at the Cobra Fencing Center following uh, uh, the NYU's invite. We're here with uh, head coach of Northwestern Western Fencing, uh, Lori Schiller, uh, winningest coach or second winningest second. coach um, with, with just over 1,200 victories. Uh, Lori, tell us a, a little bit about the significance of the photo behind you. Well, I was just pointing out that these are a couple of guys that were around when I first started. Uh, the man on the left being uh, Lazlo Chizar, who was the coach at Penn, and uh, Chava Eltesh, uh, who was uh, our Olympic Sabre coach back in the 1670s, 12 Peter Westbrook, uh, who was many-time national champion in Sabre, and of course the founder of the Westbrook Foundation, from which we get people like the Smarts and others who have gone on to do great things for U.S. fencing. So um, it's kind of a neat old picture because I haven't seen these guys, you know, and they've been passed away, of course, many years ago. Um, but I got my start here in New York also and uh, out on Long Island and um, uh, went to college at Rutgers and then went out to, went out to uh, uh, Northwestern to get my Ph.D. In, in history back in 1972. So I've been out there for some 43 years now. So, so these, are, these are guys that, that kind of really set the tone for American fencing as, as what we know it to be today. They did. Uh, uh, she saw, for example, trained Dave McConnick, you know, who was the pen coach after him for, for, year, for decades, you know, and has re retired a few years ago. And uh, um, these guys came across from the Hungarian team defected in Melbourne in 1956. And uh, at that point, they um, came to New Jersey, and then most of them stayed in New Jersey, New York area, you know. There's a few other big guys, though, like Halberstadt, who was the fencing master to the um, to the Kaiser back before World War One, and then uh, fled in the 1930s because he was Jewish, and he founded the Halberstadt Fencing Cell in San Francisco, and that's another locus of fencing in the U.S. So um, there's some pretty good stories about some of these old guys, you know, and their European background. Um, Halberstadt used to give lessons with a hole cut in his mask so he could smoke a cigar while he gave lessons. If you can imagine that these days, you know, and um, and of course I never took a lesson with a jacket always just t-shirt and shorts and if I didn't do it right I got hit you know which was the European way at the time which nowadays you'd get a lawsuit on your hands if you beat up on your students like that so um, what I did learn from Chava who coached me my senior year in college at Rutgers was I didn't like being hit so I would never hit my students you know maybe in the mask but never across their body anywhere so and you talk about that that old school European influence and and to at present how that how that's really uh, spilt over into your success and, and consistency over, uh, you know, you're your almost 40 years as a coach. 37, yeah. Um, you know, I, I learned a lot from watching these guys, the discipline, fencing is discipline, you know, but all sport is discipline, I think, and I think sport is very important. Um, I learned a, a lot about coaching from my high school cross-country coach, actually, who were state champions in New York two years in a row when I was a senior and the year after that. And he was a drill, you know, a DI from the Marine Corps, you know, and he just, he knew how to make discipline. And I try to run my team that way, you know, it's, it's a fair, honest discipline, but we, we treat the kids like athletes, we respect them as athletes, and um, I don't, you know, treat, you know, favor to one kid and another like that, you know, the way some folks do. Everybody's got to do push-ups, everybody's got to do lift, everybody's got to do conditioning, everybody does what everybody else does, and we win as a team and we lose as a team. And that's, that's a part of the success, I think, ultimately, of how we've done that. And I have to credit Ron Miller at Carolina, who's the guy that's the only other guy who's reached a thousand wins. Because um, when I first started coaching, I watched how he ran his team, and he, everybody was was he was happy to have as many kids as one defense and treated them like family. And I said, that's what I like to do. That's a good model for me to follow. And um, and at that time, we weren't that good. We'd go anywhere, travel anywhere in a van, you know, Boston, New York, Philly, down to Carolina by van, 24 hours. We'd fence, and we got better. And now we're a, a program that people want to fence, as opposed to that annoying team from the Midwest. <laughs> and you talk about really developing a program, you, you know, you, your wins and, and history with the sports speak for themselves, but also uh, over the past 10 years um, or, or more, you've been incredibly consistent in the NCAA tournament. We have. Um, once, we've gotten, once we've got scholarships in, I think, 1998, it makes a big difference because now you can recruit the top level kids. And I happen to coincide with a point where we have a lot of good U.S. fencers coming up, and, and over the last uh, you know, 15 or so, 20 years, there's a lot of good U.S. kids. And, and my philosophy has always been, I could go buy myself a championship by renting you know, a 25-year-old from Ukraine or whatever, and that's very nice, and, I, and other coaches do that, and that's fine, that's what they do. But I, I don't see them as contributing to American fencing. 
I would rather have kids, I've got two kids right now who are one graduated and one took two years off, we're training for Rio. Will they make the team? I don't know, but that's my that's part of my contribution to um, you know, the program. I've got coaches in high school in Illinois that are my alums. Jim Carpenter, who coaches at Stevens Tech and was on the Olympic team in 96, is one of my alums. I started him fencing. I think that contributes more and ultimately than bringing in the kid from outside. Now, that being said, I have a freshman from Turkey. I have signed a kid this year from Britain for next year. I mean, you know, there are some international fencers and more and more of them are coming to the U.S. and I'm not going to say no. Um, but I do think that one needs to develop American fencing as much as possible with kids who are going to stay in the sport and support the sport for the U.S. And that's been part of our success, I think, in the last, um, you know, our teams have done really well in the last two quads. Yeah, so being invested in, in fencing and, and the growth of the sport, but specifically, your philosophy is really on, on building American fencing. Well, I, I, I think that's true. You know, I, I was a, you know, a, a, a nothing, you know, half Jewish kid from Brooklyn, you know, and Long Island. And, you know, I, I wasn't the elite athlete. So I think I know what it's like to work from the bottom up. And I think it's, there's a lot of potential and there's a lot of good kids out there. And I think you've got to give them that chance. But I think it's important for college fencing, for for ADs to see you have kids that they're from this country as well as from other countries. Excellent. And, and you know, you talk about building, building uh, individuals and building a team. Mm -hmm. What is your, your coaching philosophy, you know, coming from the old school, uh, you know, Hungarian kind of school of thought? Well, obviously, I, I think there needs to be discipline, but I think there needs to be patience. And, and I think that, um, you know, um, coaching women also is, is rather different than coaching guys, I think. And, and most of these guys never coached women, you know. Um, the women didn't fence much. There were some, obviously, and it was only foil back, back in the day. Um, but I think that um, my philosophy always is, is, look, you know what, everybody's got potential, and if I get a kid over four years and I can get them better, then I've succeeded. However good they are, however, wherever they end up being, if they were a U and they're, they're a D when they finish, then we did something with them. And I think down the line, we have to be good people and ethical people. And 30 years from now, you know, down the line, you've got, I've got alumni who are, you know, been come back and they go like, this was the best time I had in four years at college. And that to me is very important because that's what I took from college was that it was a life lesson. You know, it's not just about if I have this championship or that championship. And, you know, I mean, if we win, I'm great. If we don't, well, that's okay. But if the people are good people and that they appreciate what we've done and what we've tried to do, then I think we've succeeded. And that's what teaching college is all about, not just as a coach, but as a professor as well. So, so maybe the tagline for Northwestern fencing is, is not just uh, developing champions of, of fencing, but developing life champions. It's life, it's life, it's life experience, absolutely. I agree with that. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you so much for, for sharing that. And uh, you have a, a real intense schedule here through January with uh, mm -hmm. com coming from Colorado a few weeks ago this week. You were at Penn, and, and then uh, the NYU invite, and uh, coming up, you have you have your Next own week invitational. Next we have a big invitational, and then then we go down to Duke, and then it's JOs. So, yeah, it gets to be busy in the winter. So, how do you keep uh, how do you keep your your students fresh to ensure that their their training and mentality is where it needs to be to, to perform at the highest level? Um, it, it it can be tough at times, and and you know mid quarter they start getting tired, but then we have to give them days off here and there, but. At, at this point in the year, we're traveling on Fridays and coming back on Sunday, you get a required day off, which means that basically you're only getting three days of practice. So, uh, but then the competition keeps them sharp, you know, Saturday, Sunday. So. Excellent. Well, uh, we hope you stay sharp and uh, wish you the best from, from here Thank on you. out. Thank best you. of luck in March. Thank you.